Welcome fellow freaks, geeks, and nostalgic 90s nerds to my channel, Slime and Slashers, where, yeah, we talk about everything from Nickelodeon slime to horror movie slashers, but plenty of stuff in between, like today's video subject, which is going to be 22 books that I would like to read in 2022. But I'm doing a little twist on it. I know I've been seeing this video around. However, my criteria for this video is 22 books that I own already and want to read in 2022. So everything I want to read, these 22 books are books that I already have in my possession right now. And so without further ado, let's go to the short intro and we'll come back and we'll see what I want to read for 22 books in 2022. All right, see you in a second. Welcome back, guys. All right, I'm going to go through these 22 books rather quickly. I don't want to spend too long describing the plot at length for any of these. I will try to include links down below, but if you stay all the way to the end, there'll be an extra special bonus for you. I'm going to do a book haul. It's actually like a super mini book haul, but it's a few books I actually forgot to show in my last haul that I got from Portland, and also just a few books that I got randomly in the mail recently. So stay tuned to the end if you want to see some extra goodies, bookish goodies, I should be very specific in mentioning it's bookish related goodies. All right, guys, without further ado, let's get into the 22 books that I want to read in 2022 that I already own. And before I show you my first choice I do want to say that this video is a little similar to the video that I made called 2022 reading goals where I did talk about a lot of the authors that I would like to read more by in 2022 and so on and so forth. However, this video is a lot more specific as I am actually shouting out specific titles that I would like to get to for the most part. So, so some things will be in common with that other video, but this one will be overall a lot more specific. And the first book that I want to get to that I obviously already have a copy of is The Amulet by Michael McDowell. I have only read one book thus far by Michael McDowell, and that would be The Elementals. I did really like it a lot. It was very, very atmospheric. I also read a short story by Michael McDowell in a story collection. I don't know where it is. Is it over there? Yes, it was in the collection Halloween Horrors, and I believe that was edited by Alan Ryan. So I have read that, and I enjoyed that as well. Um, that was a short story, as I said. But in terms of novels, I've only read one, and I've got to read more, and I've heard great things about this one, and I think it should be a blast. So I'm really um, trying to see if I'm a super fan of McDowell or if I just think he's a pretty good author. We'll have to see, and I'll... I'll be able to figure it out only by reading more. So that's what this is here for. And this has to do with like a necklace. I think it probably has like hidden powers or something or makes bad things happen. Yes, an amulet has something to do with rising body count. No one will listen to somebody who thinks it's the amulet's fault for all these bodies stacking up. Yeah, good stuff, it sounds like. Next book I have is Bone Saw by Patrick Lacey. And this one, the cover is incredible. I mean, obviously it looks like a freaking film, like slate and that's incredible and awesome and cool. I just like the design of it a lot. I'm a film buff so that's pretty neat. I heard great things about this book specifically from Cameron Chaney and so since I heard him talk about it on his channel I've been kind of intrigued and I heard it's kind of like a meta slasher story and I'm really into slasher horror books and so I'm gonna get to this during the summertime when I'll be reading a lot like a lot of slasher novels. So this is slated for later on in the year and I can't wait. Next up is a book that somehow, some way I have not already read and that is The Troop by Nick Cutter. It has to happen. A lot of you guys already know what this is about. This is about a Boy Scout troop that are out camping and shit goes to hell. Pardon my French. Uh, a lot of stuff goes down. There's like apparently like gross stuff happening. Like I think something to do with like worms digestive stuff. I don't know. Anyway, it's going to be crazy and I cannot freaking wait as well. I know I'm saying I can't wait for all of these, but hell, it's true. All right. So yes, The Troop. I've got to get it done this year. And I think I'm going to read this in March, which is literally next month since I'm filming this in February. So yay, it's not that far away. All right. And Bone Saw was a slasher. And here we have another slasher novel, Clown in a Cornfield by Adam Caesar. And I feel like this is a book that I have not read and everyone else on the planet has read it. Uh, and I'm going to save this again for summertime so I can do a whole slasher type theme. And it'll be perfect timing because Adam Caesar's second book in this series is coming out. And so it's the perfect time. Why not? 
another book that I have slated to read in March, because March is going to be my must-read month, filled with books that I feel like I need to get to but I haven't been able to get to yet. And so this would fall into that category. This is The Girl Next Door by Jack Ketchum. It's going to be emotionally very punishing. I know it's going to be hard to stomach the things that are happening in this book. Um, a girl kind of gets taken advantage of by these people she's staying with. Um, including like a group of kids and I don't really know too many specifics about it but I'm gonna have to see what it's about for myself. It's a must read in a lot of people's opinions even though it's going to be a hard read but I'm going to get to it and I, I want to see what it's all about for myself. So that's slated for March. You'll see a theme and that theme is kind of old school reads with these 22 books that I really want to get to. Here's another old school read but it's actually a newer edition. This is the paperback from Hell edition of The Auctioneer by Joan Sampson and I've heard amazing things about this. I heard it's really really good and I just need to get to it. So I don't know when, but I'm also doing a month of reading that's thematic in April. So March is must read and April is old school April. So literally any of these old school books could be perfect for April unless I have them slated for some other month for some other reason. But yeah, this would be perfect for April time and I think I'm leaning towards putting it there in terms of when I'm going to aim to read it. And I've just... I've heard a lot of good things about it. Uh, I heard that Joan Sampson is a very wonderful writer, or she was a wonderful writer, I should say, and that this is kind of like a hidden gem before Grady Hendrix kind of made it a, a bigger, more well-known gem type of thing. Also slated for Old School April, I'm kind of cheating here and I'm counting these three books as one. So I had one Fear Street, Fear Park book a couple of months ago and my friend Kat for my birthday got me the other two books so I have the complete Fear Street Fear Park little mini collection here and I'm so pumped because I mean look at the freaking covers incredible I'd love to try to get to these and this would be perfect for old school April because I'm doing everything old school including tons of Fear Street reads, tons of Goosebump reads. This will fit in so nicely and I can't believe Kat gave me these. I'm so excited to get to them. I know I'm reading a lot of carnival stuff now as we are talking and I'm filming this now which is during my readathon which is all carnival themed but why not spread out the carnival love all year long and why not stretch it out into April? Who cares? Let's do it! Okay, and if you guys are a part of my book club, you might know that we recently read for our January group read, we read Slumber Party by Christopher Pike. However, not everyone really liked that one, and I thought it was okay, but, you know, nothing amazing. However, I've heard awesome things about The Midnight Club, and so that's why I want to get to this one. I heard, you know, that it's kind of heart-wrenching and different type of book, and so I really want to see what it's all about, and I've been wanting to read more Christopher Pike. I've only read two books by him so far. One was Monster and one was Slumber Party as a reference, so this will be the third book I will have read by Christopher Pike, and this would be perfect for Old School April or any other month that I just feel like reading something that is uh, more of a a vintage YA read. So yeah, this should be a lot of fun, but also kind of sad, I heard. But yes, I still am excited about it. A newer book, Fright Watch, The Stitchers, and I really want to get to this because I've heard nothing but fantastic things about it. Lots of people have been telling me, oh, it's so good. It's actually a series of books. This is only the first book, and I've got to get through the first book before I can continue on, so that's why I kind of want to have this read by the end of 2022 so I can keep going in the series. And I've just been really eager to get to it and I actually received this as a gift from my Secret Santa where we did this whole Secret Santa thing on Instagram and my wonderful Secret Santa gave me gave me this book so all right we've got a whole bunch of old school books coming up here and I freaking love old school if you guys didn't know this one's gonna be so much fun this is Moonbane by Al San Antonio someone recommended to me that I should pick this up and they even told me that somebody was selling it on Instagram so this is one of the few old school paperbacks that I actually bought online versus in a used bookstore, which I usually try and strive to do versus getting stuff online. But sometimes you just like see something and you have to get it. And it's not outrageous, so why not sometimes? Uh, just go for it. Buy the book. You know, buy the book. I don't know. And that's what I did in this case. So yes, Moonbane. Let me just show you guys a little bit up close what the cover looks like. Obviously, we've got like a space theme here and a werewolf. So how are these two things going to go together? Blood Moon. One cold winter night, Jason Blake and his son, Richie, are drawn outdoors by a magical sight, a meteor shower so bright, so long-lasting, that they can scarcely believe it is a natural event. 
They are thrilled when one of the golden rocks falls into the field behind their rental farmhouse. But before the night is over, Jason's wife is brutally murdered and his son is hideously transformed as every man, woman, and child on Earth becomes the helpless prey of an ancient pack of beings with an insatiable appetite for destruction and blood. Hell yeah! Freaking pack of werewolves from space, it sounds like. And this sounds incredible to me, so hell yes, sign me up. I am on board for that ship, so <laughs> whatever, dumb. All right. Here we have the Breeze Horror by Candice Cap Capum Negro. Uh, I've been wanting to read this for quite a while. It was actually on my list of top 10 vintage horror dream finds that I wanted to find at a used bookstore in person. And after I put it on that list, lo and behold, I freaking found this at a used bookstore in person, which is exactly what I wanted to happen. And it happened! So I'm pretty pumped that it actually took place like that. It's almost like I willed it into existence that I would find it. I, I kind of made it happen in a way with my mind power. It at least it feels that way sometimes. And obviously the cover is awesome, but I want to read it for the story. I've actually heard decent things about this. I used to really watch this YouTube channel. It's one of my favorite channels that I found in 2021. Leon, that's his real name, but his YouTube name is Paperback Mania. And he talked about this book and it was like one of his like top 10 of 2018 or 2019 uh, in terms of top 10 reads. And so because he was so into it and I love his YouTube channel, I still watch his old videos even though I've watched like almost everything he's put out. He hasn't made a new one in a long time, but I really respect his opinion and I would really love to get to this because he kind of praised it. And so yeah, that's why it's definitely on my list of 22 books that I want to get to. Another book that was on my top 10 vintage dream finds, and this would be The Cartoonist by Sean Costello. And I was so lucky to find this. Oh my god, and it's in decent shape. And I've heard great things about the story itself, but even if I heard bad things about the story, I would still want to read it because it's called The Cartoonist. And I love animation, and this guy looks like he's an animator. And even if the character's not an animator, please guys, don't flip and burst my bubble. <laughs> please just let me have this. Let me think that it's about a cartoonist. Because sometimes, you know, the covers and even the titles of books, especially old school vintage horror books, they're flipping been misleading sometimes and so that is why you have to go in and like take things with a grain of salt like how the cover looks or you know what whatever the back of the book makes it sound like sometimes it's like kind of misleading however i'm gonna give this one a chance and see what i think of it for myself so yes the cartoonist next up is the wasp factory by ian banks i've heard a lot of disturbing things about this book and that is why i have to get to it so not to spoil anything because i'm going to talk about this in my january wrap-up but i know i can handle almost anything now because i recently read the book cows which is so notorious for being out there and very disturbing i read it i got through it i was like yeah bitch i did it i don't know why i'm cursing so much i apologize it's because i'm kind of pumped up about talking about these books it's been a hard day and actually honestly a hard week so this is kind of like a release for me and that's why I think I'm so just over the top and excited about everything but I need to get to this and I know I can handle it because I could handle cows and so I feel like I'm invincible right now and I will have more to say about cows in my January wrap-up whenever I film that I'm kind of procrastinating because it's like a lot to think about what to say about it however if you really are impatient and want to know my thoughts you can check out my links in my description. I have my Goodreads page linked and I did review it on Goodreads and it's one of my favorite reviews I've, that I've ever written on Goodreads. It's kind of got some haha -ha funny little like wordplay in there I guess that I was I don't know trying to be cute with but anyway I don't know. I really liked how it turned out and I feel like a book like Cows it's okay to kind of be a little I don't know like ho oh, oh, nod nod wink wink uh, type of deal in the review itself because of the type of book it is. But yeah, I don't regret reading it and I know I wouldn't regret reading this either. That's why it's on my list for 22 books that I want to read in 2022. All right, and here we got a Christmas book that I'd really love to get to. I've heard wonderful things about it. Now, this has nothing to do with the movie Black Christmas. This is Black Christmas the Book by Thomas Altman and I just, I'm intrigued. The majority of these are kind of 
more old school. I didn't realize how many older books I picked until like they're piled up here and I'm like, these are all old. Like none of them are new really, except the one I'm about to talk about is a newer book. I had a few little newer ones hidden in. This is Brother by Anaya Alborn. I've heard fantastic things about this author and actually one of my goals for 2022 when I released that 2022 reading goals video, I said I wanted to read a book by Anaya Alborn because I haven't checked out her work yet, but I've been hearing really positive things about how she writes and how hard, hard hitting her stories are and so that is why I feel like this is a priority read for me. I already own it. Why not ch try to get it off my bookshelf in terms of unread stuff that I haven't checked out that I flip and own and it's just sitting there. I've got to read it. The next book I'm going to mention I do not have a physical copy of and that book is What's Wrong with Valerie by D.A. Fowler and I really want to finish this because I started it last year. I have not finished it. I was kindly provided this audio file by the wonderful publishing house and they publish a lot of vintage horror in newer editions and also in audiobook editions too and so I think that's really special because you can't really find a lot of old school horror on audiobook right now. You can find some in like ebook versions like kindle versions but not a lot of them are on audio and so this one is what's wrong with valerie and so i want to get to it really really bad and i will finish it this year that's why it's on this list to keep me accountable essentially to hold me to my word and make sure that hey kelsey you said you were going to try to read this in 2022 so stick to it my summer's kind of packed including one of the books i'm reading i'm reading a ton of king books this year throughout the whole year at least one King book or short story a month, if not more short stories, some months. I'm reading like in one month, I'm reading three King short stories, but they're all really short. Other months, I'm reading a big ass flipping King book at once. And one of those long King books is Stephen King's It. And so that's slated for summertime. I'm doing this whole project with Kat. We have a whole video up right now if you're curious to see which King books we're reading and when. And we're also going to be watching all the adaptations of the books or stories we're going to be reading. So that video with all that info is up right now now. I'll link it below. And I'm going to be reading it, as I said, in the summer, but I'm going to really try my hardest to get to this in the summer as well. It's one of the highest priority books on this whole list. Like, if I had to rank them in order, I'm just giving you guys a random order right now, but this one would have been near the top if, if I had done this in some kind of order because... Um, well, I know for one, my friend Nathan, this is one of his favorite books of all time. Like growing up, this was his favorite book. And this is Boy's Life by Robert McCammon. And a lot of people say it's McCammon's best work. And I've just heard that it's like a great coming of age story. And I haven't heard a negative thing about it. And so how great would it be to read it and Boy's Life kind of close together? And another book that's like both of these books, this and it, would be Summer of Night by Dan Simmons. However, that one's a little bit longer. I don't think I'm going to get to Summer of Night this year, but if you ask me, like, 23 books you want to read for 2023, sure, yes, definitely 100% I want to get to Summer of Night. But for, you know, this year, it's not on my 22 books list, but this is. Next up is Deliver Us from Evil. And again, another book that I heard great things about. I know Cameron Chaney's read this. I've actually known a few people here on YouTube who have read this. And so I think it's time that I read it. I really want to expand my horizons this year and at least read 20 or 30 paperbacks from hell. And this I would consider a paperback from hell type of book. It's older. It's vintage horror, essentially. And just look at this fantastic cover, by the way. Lovely. The hands just coming up from the swamp here. The face, oh, all gross with red eyes. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes. Next up, I do have a month in mind for this book. This is The Keepsake by Paul Husson. And I want to read this in March because March, of course, is the month of St. Patty's Day. And that's a holiday, honestly, I've really gotten hardcore into the past year or year and a half. So two of my favorite bands, I've always liked one out of the two, but the second one is kind of like a newer discovered love type of deal. So one's Flogging Molly and the other is Dropkick Murphys. And because I'm so into them and they're both basically Irish type of bands, Dropkick Murphys is kind of like Irish punk and then, or Celtic punk you could say, and Flogging Molly is more traditional Celtic, but it's also Celtic punk basically just kind of straight Celtic music in, in some ways. But yes, it definitely has a punk feel to it as well. 
And last year, I just had a great time making Irish food and flipping watching Irish live streamed music. And I don't know, it was just a wonderful time. And so now, I don't know, St. Patty's Day is kind of a big deal to me now. So uh, in honor of St. Patty's Day, this book has some kind of Irish flair. So let me just tell you a little bit about the description real quick. The keepsake. It was only a souvenir of Ireland, a small stone that bore, if you look very closely, the suggestion of a human face. She couldn't know that the only power of St. Patrick had kept its evil in check through the centuries, that in her own home when the lights were out, it could become a gateway for an unimaginable malevolence with a thirst for blood and for her unborn child. And yes, this just sounds fabulous to me. It's got pretty decent ratings on Goodreads. I also really love the font, by the way, with the dripping blood, but this sounds like fun. And in fact, I saw somebody on Goodreads write something about how could you not like a vampiric stone that like kills people? Like you've heard of, you know, killer crabs, killer roaches, killer babies, killer kids, but have you ever heard of a killer stone? And so that description or review, I should say, really intrigued me more than I was already interested in reading this. So yes, it's gonna be done this year. I'm gonna read it. Here we have a very notorious book. This is Ritual, aka Feast by Graham Masterton. Cannibalism, cults, I don't know, it's gonna have it all. By the way, so I'm doing a slasher reading theme for the summertime. I'm also thinking about doing a cult readathon for the summer. So books, specifically horror books that have to do with cults, I think I'm going to flip in, do a whole little mini readathon sometime during the summer if I could fit it in, which I hope I can. By the way, I noticed that when I say the word Colts, it sounds like I'm saying Colts like the freaking football team. No, I don't know what it is about my accent, but I'm saying Colts with a U <laughs> and it's not coming out right. But yes, as in like, you know, people are being uh, kind of swayed to do certain things that they wouldn't normally do. That kind of thing. Not the football team with the O, the C-O-L-T-S. It's C-U-L-T-S. And that's what I want to do is read more about that. And this features that heavily for sure. And just, you know, it's kind of like a gruesome read. And that's why I can't wait to get to it. All right. And I already included a book by D.A. Fowler on this list. I already said I wanted to finish What's Wrong with Valerie, but I very much really would like to get to Book of the Damned. Any horror books about books, I think, is kind of cool and pretty neat of a concept, and that's what this is. Obviously, there is some kind of book, It's Damned, hence the name Book of the Damned, and all kinds of crazy stuff, I assume, is going to go down. And so that is why I think I need to read this, and I'm pretty pumped about it. All right, we've got one more book to go. What is it? So another book I'd love to get to this year and it's the last one I'm going to talk about today. It's a book by one of my favorite authors, Grady Hendrix, and here it is. It's Horror Store, and I know my friend Kelly, by the way, she recently read this and did not like it at all. I think she was kind of bored by it, but I've heard good things from almost everyone else about this book, and I've been owning this for like over a year now, and I've read almost everything else by Grady Hendrix, you know, minus a few things here or there. I feel like I have to get to this. It's like, why haven't I gotten to it already? Now, I know Grady Hendrix is coming out with a new book, but that would be cheating. I know it's on a lot of people's 2022, you know, 22 books list that they want to get to. However, for me, I'm not putting it on there because I don't have physically have a copy of it, and I'm only including things that I own. And so, yes, I will want to get to that Grady Hendrix books when it's released. However, this one is already in my possession, so why not get to it? And by the way, speaking of possession... This has to do with possession of a different sort. It's kind of like a haunted Ikea type of situation. Obviously, the the store is not called Ikea. There would be flipping, you know, copyright issues there. But it's called something else, but it's basically like an Ikea. So that's the idea of it. And it's haunted. And, like, that just sounds like so much fun and so out there and so zany and so Grady Hendrix. And I really like his style. I really like his sense of humor. And so I think this will be very enjoyable. And that's why it's landed on my list for 22 books that I really want to get to in 2022. All right. So I believe if I counted right, which if I didn't, I'll feel really bad about. But if I counted right, that should be all of the books. That should be all 22 right there. All right, and since you guys stuck with me so long, I promised I would give you the mini haul, so here it is. Dun, 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 dun. All right, I'm gonna start with something new, and then everything else will be old. So I got this in the mail a few days ago, and as you can see, I've already marked it up. This is nothing that you have to really read intensely. So you might be thinking, wow, you got into it that far? Well, it's really just a list. It's like a, a compilation of things. 
So this is 150 Exquisite Horror Books, the essential guide to the best 150 books of contemporary horror fiction, edited by Bram Stoker Award winner Alessandro Manzetti. And I gotta tell you, there's a lot of great books in here. And it's not just Alexandro's opinion. It's actually a lot of other contributors, like by authors, they give their top 10 lists of their like favorite horror books from 1986 to 2000 whatever. For instance, I'll show you um, a page here. And I'm just really excited about having this book because the reason I marked it up so much is because this is going to guide me to make future lists of books that I really want to get to. So the first contributor, you could see Grady Hendrix, who I just kind of talked about recently. He's got his list of top 10 books published from 1986 to 2020. And this is his list. By the way, I've read one book off of his list, which was Toy Cemetery by William W. Johnstone. I was trying to find it to make sure it was right. He's got Beloved on his list. He's got Black Ambrosia on his list. He's got Rotters on his list. So he's got lots of good stories here. He's got XY by Michael Blo Bloomlin on his list, which I actually own an old school copy of that one. So yes, so Orange, I've marked, you know, contributors list that I would like to read at least one book off of. And then Green, I marked slasher books I want to get to. Yellow, I marked just general books I want to get to. And pink, I actually found a few zombie book recommendations. And my friend Kat and I are going to be reading zombie-themed books in the month of May for National Zombie Awareness Month. And so, how perfect is this? Tons of suggestions, color-coded. I'm not all the way through. I think I left off on page 137 out of, like, 180. So I still have more, you know, suggestions to look through, but I'm so jazzed to just have this as a reference. Very light reading, and I can't wait to just keep going back to this to try to figure out what to read next. All right, and this one I picked up from Thrift Books because I recently got a Spine Chillers book, and I saw this when I was looking for other Spine Chillers books, and the cover just spoke to me. This is pizza with extra creeps instead of I guess with extra cheese and let me just show you this wonderful cover we've got the tube tv with the antenna with some hands reaching out this kid's eating pizza he's shocked he's got a dog here I don't know you guys this is amazing this is the type of old school cover that I love this was published in 1996 originally of course this is not a first printing at all but I just really liked the cover and I really wanted to read it. Uh, maybe for April for my whole old school theme, this would be a lot of fun. We'll see when I get it done. And these next three books are books I forgot to haul in my Portland, Maine book haul video. And I cannot believe I forgot them because these were the three books I was most excited about showing you guys. I just can't believe it slipped my mind. All right, so I found these really cool editions of Christopher Pike books. And these are UK editions of Christopher Pike books. So here we have The Wicked Heart. And as you could see, you know, I have a whole bunch of colorful, like, US editions of Christopher Pike books. You could see this one's a lot more, you know, subdued colors. You got a cockroach crawling across a bloody flipping hammer. So you know stuff went down, you know, during this scene. So what is going on in this book? But it says an innocent turned evil. And it's just such a great edition. Hold on a second. I will show you the other edition of it. So here is my Archway paperback US edition of the same book. And yes, there is a hammer being used here. And it is a great cover. And I love the colorful Archway paperback versions of Christopher Pike's books. But come on, this one's badass too. Like, let's do a side by side here. This is so cool that I found this in Portland and it wasn't outrageous. And there was a few I had to put back. I'm so sad. Why didn't I just get them all? There's no way I'll collect them anyplace else. I am a fool for not getting them all, but still happy to have a few. Happy to have the three I'm going to show you. So that was one out of three. And this one's a lot more subdued than the one I showed you last. This is just a pair of eyes looking creepy. This is see you later. You know, see you like, I see you. It's kind of like that. All right. So... This, again, is a UK edition, I believe. Let's see, does it have any info? Copyright 1990, which is when it was first published. And this was published, this edition, in 1992, it says. All right, so just to show you side by side, I do have the other edition of See You Later. Again, very colorful. I actually like this cover a little bit better. However, just how cool is it to have both? I think it's pretty damn cool if you ask me. Wonderful stuff here. 
let's just look at the spines too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this last one, I don't have a US copy of. I thought I did, but apparently I don't. And I really like this UK edition copy cover. It, it's quite nice. This is the visitor. And you could see like a crystal ball and like a skeletal hand, and like lightning bolts coming out of it. I don't know. It's pretty nice to me. I like it. And it says, He's out of this world. The visitor. Who is Tom? The unnaturally tall, thin teenager with snow white hair. Where does he come from? With those eyes, the mesmerizing stare that makes you feel like you're looking into deep space. Most people like him. They say he's a really nice guy. But is Tom even human? I don't know, but I want to find out. And so yes, I'm so happy to have this awesome UK edition. And just to show you the three UK editions kind of... Now these look like they match, and this one doesn't. But I believe this one's UK too, right? Yep. This one was published in Britain in 1992, and The Visitor was published in the UK in 1996. This one's the first printing. So yes, I'm very excited. I should have bought more. Damn it, I should have bought more. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed that little extra mini haul. And I think I've gotten more things in the mail that are coming soon. So who knows, maybe there'll be another mini haul at the back of another video coming up soon. But for this time, guys, that's all I have. Until next time, you know what you could do. I say it all the time. Keep on killing it. And thank you so much for watching. Bye, guys.